Yes. That's what globalization oh, started yeah, to, to do. Yes, we get a better, perfect. we get a cheap profit. But then also look at China. China is selling us crap sometimes. And we don't, you know, we can't really eat their food. A lot of their fish and stuff, we can't eat that. It's better to get that fish from Mexico than go to get it from China. You know, and we, so what we, there's a trade-off that we've, we've done with Absolutely. globalization. And our, and our, with our country ends up, uh, you, you know, they say, oh, we don't want immigration. Oh, you know, you want this nanny over here, you don't want an American nanny, you want that nanny to come across. Those people aren't just coming here because they want to. They come well, they wouldn't, they wouldn't you, mind you, an American nanny. They, they just here. don't want to yeah. pay American yeah. nanny oh, rates. Oh, yeah, I'm not right. going to pay an American nanny when I have a kid. I'm going to get an auntie or something from Nicaragua legally. Right. Legally, family. but I will. I'm going to get a genuine, genuine cousin. I'm just yeah. saying that you know <laughs> that, uh, you can't you can't have it both ways. You can't say that you don't want them here, but then all of a sudden you 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 like that you love that cheap. Well, labor. see, here's the thing. You know, someone who's a centrist, right. you know, like I am, right. um, I do. I want them here. I right. would say that they're welcome, and I want you know open yeah. markets. Mm -hmm. But I'm also going to say you know the open markets, the free market isn't without flaws, right. isn't without externalities. The free mm -hmm. market fails. So yeah. I don't think you can have a well, global capitalism economy without interfering in some way to retrain people right. who lose their manufacturing jobs and find them a new job. Like you have to make up for the gaps that you already know are but, there. But, but they've that's never not how wanted the to pay. Works. They've never wanted to pay the American worker. The reason why we were doing so well in the 50s and the 60s because you did, they did cover our medical. They did cover a lot of the things that we did. And, and so you were able to go from having nothing. You could stay at a job like that. They did not prep the American worker to make that change. No. They, made, they turned us into consumers. They didn't turn us. So we went from 40% production to 10% production. And now, oh, you're a consumer. So our society is now... 80 to 90 percent consumerism. It's all about you buying a product. We sell, and so we bring the cheap workers. And you say, "Yeah, back then we could work at 75 an hour. Yes, that was a that's called minimum wage, and that was a high school kid who had that job. Now you have a grown 45 year old dude sitting there working at McDonald's. Why? Because you took his job and you outsourced it to some other country, you know? Because you said, "Oh, we're going to get that cheap product." But, but yeah, the, but the company's I mean, making, but, but the corporation that, is the, making a big the money problems, off that. The problems in society right now are a lot more complex and multi-layered than just, oh, we sent the jobs over there. We, I but think they we create, have some I'm just saying they where, created the narrative. If you want to under, understand it, the corporations created that narrative because they didn't want to pay the taxes. They mm -hmm. don't want to pay the taxes. You've never wanted to pay the American worker the money that he has deserved. Well, I we mean, also have to look at rents. and like You can't look at just how people are struggling now with minimum wage jobs without looking at the real estate problem, the fact that you've got people buying up land and that the cost of, of properties go skyrocketed because but, so many people are just buying as investment properties and they're just popping down and then raising and eight, rents. And, 2007 and 2008, those properties were worth nothing because we had a bubble. It burst. Okay, You were telling people, oh, a person with a 543 FICA score was getting these types of getting loans and knowing when I bought my first home, I had to be in the seven, seven fifty or something to buy a home. Then you give it to a guy who can barely get by, and he's five forty three, and then once he signs on the dotted line, his rent, his mortgage blows up to four thousand dollars a month. So they lose their home. They're now that's a lot of your homeless that you see now. People come in buy the property. Now everything's changed. It's shifted, and now fifty thousand dollars a year or sixty grand a year used to be able to get you a house. Now that person making that kind of money can't buy a home. I live with my mother, and I make, a, I have a day job, and I make good money. It, you know, I'm with you. I, and it's ridiculous. Yeah, it's insane. The median home price is five hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year here in LA. Here in LA, mm -hmm. yeah, and that's, that's not even that great of a home, and no. not that great of an area. No, and they know everything is overpriced, and they keep saying, "Well, we're going to do this." Now you want to throw a hundred million dollars at homelessness? You hope it works. Don't you got? We got mentally ill. We have. We have so much we have to do. To my my to problem with the up. way we approach policy and things is that we tend to go top down. Right. We're like, okay, we're going to make everything 
open market. We're going to, oh, no, now we're going to do everything. We're big government. No, 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 no. You have to look at every different issue, and sometimes you're going to decide to be protectionist, mm-hmm. and other times you're going to want to be a uh, globalist. Like, right. I think Wait, it would have, make sense. have an actual nuanced right? policy? Nuanced policy? You know, I had a friend who just told me last week that my opinions didn't matter because I'm a centrist. I was like, you know what? Fuck off. Right. Um, <laughs> I absolutely think it would be, it's great that we can buy cheap products because we send the labor over there, yeah. but also we can't just let housing prices skyrocket here right. because the Chinese want to buy all our property as investment. Pro- that needs protection. We need to protect Wait, our property. But we, the, the American public, as well as American corporation, prostituted our country and sold it off. Um, they amen. sold it <laughs> off. That's why, you, you know, this whole big this skyscraper, that was made by the guy who owns Korean Air. That's his. That's oh, the his, uh, the new thing yeah, downtown. Yeah, he, uh, he, here in LA. Yeah, yeah, that's his building. That's ridiculous. Okay, they they put that there. Did you know that Those we are... we a bunch of our land, uh, not our land, our water here in California is being used to grow um, alfalfa for hamsters in Japan, mm-hmm. and also for dairy products mm-hmm. that go to Saudi Arabia. A yes. bunch of of our water is just going to Saudi Arabia. What the hell? That is our water. That's well, Nestle California has the water. best water deal in town. Nestle. Pay, Nestle owns the majority of the water. Nestle Company. So I would say, oh, go ahead. No, and I'm just going to say that they didn't. They they are whereas you know we're paying what we're paying. Nestle pays peanuts for that water that they have for that country uh, for yeah. the company. They have. I would say I'm very which conflicted. they then bottle and sell. Right, right, back to us for yes. ten times as much. Um, we I'm should very be so lucky ten times. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. No, on the one hand, like I do see the value in globalism, and I'm I'm trying to hang on to that because that's what I learned in sure. college, and right. they're like, yeah, the free market wins. But then I do see all these flaws, and that is why Trump won because you've got all these elite Republicans who are smart and well educated who know that their textbooks told them the free market is the right thing, and and I dump Hillary Clinton in that mix because even though she's a cent like she's a centrist, not a full lefty. Um, so Jeb Bush and the Mitt Romneys and all of them, they're all looking at this textbook free market stuff. And Trump but, is the first one to finally be like, okay, yeah, but that has flaws. And that really resonated with people, even though he's an idiot. But he was the only one <laughs> to, recognize. to recognize it. But, but the thing is, you know, that's, that's the thing that drives me nuts about his followers is that he says, well, yeah, there are flaws. And then basically his plan to solve everything trickled down, which – we all know it doesn't work yeah, historically. That's garbage. Um, well, he's going to bring back coal. <laughs> yeah. Have you seen a guy that's been working in a coal mine? I didn't hear him talk. <laughs> he can't because it's called black. It's called black lung, oh and they God. cannot breathe. The and they want they they want this crap back. It doesn't. It's, you can't. I want my that's job like back. That's like saying, look, we're going to close the gender gap, make more jobs for women by legalizing prostitution. Yeah. Everybody, <laughs> brothels across America. <laughs> you know, but. The, that was one of one of my favorite uh, charity uh, activism things they did when I was a kid was brothels across America. <laughs> it was shortly after Hands Across America, right. uh, but uh, so <laughs> we're you know we're talking about globalism and uh, we're we're talking about Trump. I th- I think the the link here that is is fairly obvious is Trump went to the the G20 and was complaining about the the German trade surplus and says that America just wants trade to be fair. But the thing is, as we've seen from all his complaints about the quote-unquote fake media, fair means favorable to Donald Trump. Absolutely. So when Donald Trump is complaining about things being unfair... That doesn't mean fair or unfair in the way that it is traditionally understood. I think this is one of the things that, you know, it, I personally uh, feel a need to stand up for is that that words still have meaning in the age of Trump. Um, when he says fair, that doesn't mean fair. Uh, when someone says that black China is a genius, no, she's not. <laughs> I, it's a Facebook thing that we'll, we'll talk about yeah. after. Yeah, trust me. Uh, not getting into it here. But, you know, people, people, words should still have meaning. 
you know, there's, I understand slang. I, I have stopped trying to correct the grammar of anyone who tells me they're whoop woke. Whoop. <laughs> no, whoop well, whoop to whoop is, that's a whole other thing. That's, <laughs> You know, I, it'll be your I, language I think eventually. he's trying to coin a catchphrase, you know, and it'll it's be like, dictionary. it'll Literally. be there eventually. Yeah. But for now, I'm more worried about, you know, the widespread, like, uh, I, I would have thought some people were awakened. Nope. They're woke. <laughs> Fair enough. All right? I'm like woke. Well, I, it feels you know, good to say. Yeah, I fine, whatever. All right. You know, but there are some things that you, it's like. You just like, don't like it because you like to wake and bake and there's no woke and boke. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> I I will have boked. I'm really bad at this. That sounds sexual, but like not in a cool way. I'm boked. <laughs> we boked. Yeah. Totally boked her, dude. Yeah. That hurts. Yeah. It's like when two chubby people make love. They boke. I don't know. Just need flour. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so that's where the show has gone for yeah. today. Um but any other thoughts on the G20 and how uh, we are seeing the well, decline of America? What, you know, it, it's, it's obvious what we're seeing happen in, in front of us. Uh, what, what do you think the, the end game is, though, of American isolationism? Well, I, I think that we're, you know, when they try to, as they were, I was reading a couple of articles, and they were trying to say that we're equal, that Russia's equal with us. Well, no, they're not, because one, we have more people than they do. Two, we our economy is way better than their so economy. So much better. And um, the fact that you're allowing a guy to our, our democracy works better than theirs do. They live under an authoritarian. Anytime anybody that agree, disagrees with him, you're going. You're, they're going to get rid of your ass. You are, or you're they, going to get we're, And we're only moving in that direction. Right. right. Their infrastructure is all yet. broken. I was doing some yeah. research because uh, I don't want to talk about my day job, but I do a lot of research for it. And part uh-huh. of that was looking at different countries and uh, investment in those countries as far as appeal to invest. They don't have good infrastructure, no. and and it's not appealing for people to set up business in Russia because it's so corrupt. Like you don't know you you don't want to send a shipment of your stuff from you know point A to point B in Russia because a it, it might get stuck on some broken train tracks right. or B you're going to get robbed right. so well, you it's can't stuck compare. on some broken train tracks exactly. <laughs> right? you, you know um, really broke them with the purpose. finger quotes <laughs> yeah. Yeah. you know I'm, I'm actually and not to like keep going back to Missouri references but I'm keeping an eye on Branson Missouri I think that is going to be the Branson. indicator uh, basically when things get so bad in America that Yakov Smirnov closes his theater in Branson and decides to go back to Russia that's when I know we have reached uh, the point. Well, he's halfway there. He's not going to Russia, but he sold the theater. Oh, did he? Yeah, yeah. Uh oh. Yeah, um, but that was a couple years ago. Um, he saw this coming. Now, uh, oh, Tillerson said that you know the the relationship between America and Russia is the most important, and they're the two largest uh, nuclear powers. And I'm thinking, well, yeah. <clears throat> that kind of hurts your arguments against North Korea. Of course they want to have a powerful nuclear force because that's what you respect, you know? So uh, I, I think, you know, he, he could acknowledge that, but it does kind of tell you why North Korea wants to continue along the path. I think, but but I you think know that. Uh-huh. Yeah, you know that Tillerson is the only one speaking. Since, that, since <laughs> Trump has had this meeting with, you haven't heard a word from Trump. He has not spoken... Tillerson stepped out. He was the first one to open his mouth. No, no, no. We don't want to talk to you. Let the idiot speak. Let the idiot tell us what you talked about with Russia. Why are you telling me? When Obama... So, so wait, speak, you're saying that that should have been Jared Kushner? <laughs> uh, probably, yes. That, you know, doing the guy, Secretary of State's he job. Doesn't want to be, he doesn't want to be questioned. He's used this whole con thing about, oh, they're going to write something fake about me. This is blah, blah, blah. And they're going to keep... You know, you know, that's not true. You don't... You know that... You're, you're insulting all the journalists and everything else because this is where they get you on saying that they don't want – this is the reason why they can, can dummy down everything. But they tell you all the smart people are trying to trick you. No, the smart people are the ones asking the questions that are calling you on your shit. And they're telling the dumb people, don't listen to these smart people. Look at them. They're so educated. That's like telling – you know, Tyson DeGrasse, that, uh, Neil Tyson DeGrasse, that, oh, well, no, 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 no. He doesn't he's, know. He's, he's a black it. man talking about <laughs> astrophysicists. What can he tell us about that? He doesn't know anything. He's black. Like, uh, hmm, he can tell you a lot, but you, they don't 
I showed a Yeah, they try and them. delegitimize the, yeah, the actual said, sources should, of so, information that will help them. And that's why he doesn't speak. Yeah. It's, 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 it's amazing how See, we're putting I, down... It's uh, terrifying. Edu- yeah, you yeah. know, we were talking about this before the show. I, I'm, again, because I'm an optimist, I think Tillerson is doing the talking because Trump knows that he is going to be under oath soon in front of one or more uh, congressional committees regarding Russian interference. Right. So, of course, because he's going to be under oath and... Te-